This is Rachel Seaholm. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. It's May 19th, and we are in a unique position where some of us are appearing via video, some of us by phone, me being one of them, um, from an upstairs bedroom. So um, why don't we get the meeting started, and the first item that we have is to approve the order of the agenda. So this is an action item. So, so moved. Is there second. a second? Okay. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? If you could say who's first and seconding, I am i can't hear your voices very well. Yep. 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 Sorry about that. Who first, who, who said first? Mary. And second was that Carrie? Yes, I seconded it, Carrie. Oh, well, this is okay. going to be confusing, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie and Mary. Okay, Thank so you. we had, we had um, um, any opposed? And then there was silence, so I think that one's approved. So let's turn to number two. Minutes of the February 18th meeting. Which is an action item. Move, move approval, this is Mary. Second that, this is Carrie. That was my alarm. Um, okay, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? None, okay. We got that done. So, um, okay, let's move on to, is Sunny with us today? Sunny? Um, Sunny is with board? us. Great. Sunny, take take it away. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So as you are aware, um, all in-person library programming has been suspended indefinitely. Um, so we are working on a bunch of things that can be done um, for the summer reading program, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, you can always look at our website to see if there's any developments or anything that we've released. Uh, right now, uh, Children's is doing the Crafternoons, the pickup. Um, it's only at Maine, and you would want to email Lauren Johnson. Uh, her email is on our website. Uh, if you'd like to pick up a craft, and that is available on Tuesdays from 12 to 5.30. Um, they also have been doing the online story times and the baby rhyme time. Those have been going out on Wednesdays and most Thursdays. Um, so keep an eye out for those and keep an eye out for any developments with them. And then if you haven't had a chance to drive by the library, we also have the, the I Spy window display up for kids to kind of stay outside but look for things on the glass. So some multi-generational events that we have going on. Um, we still do have Northern Focus, which I don't think we've talked to you guys about before. So it is an addition onto the winter writing program, Northern Narratives. So Northern Focus is a photography um, competition. We will be putting up everyone who enters into a gallery here at the main location. Um, and then we'll have a judging process and whoever wins that, that photo will be the, the cover art of the book. Uh, so that is going on. Fill out the form online and submit your photo uh, to the form by June 1st. We also have an emoji poetry contest going on for teen and adults. And then the silent reading party has been temporary temporarily replaced with a pairs well with event. Um, that'll be going on uh, May 18th through the 21st, so people can write in what they're drinking and what, what might pair well with that. We have some people who are professionals at pairing <laughs> books with, with their wines and such. <laughs> Uh, we also have the stay at home book clubs. Um, we have been having them every Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, keep your eye out for those. We might be changing the times or the frequency as we move into doing other programs um, or other social media engagements. Um, we do also have our official book clubs have moved online. So here uh, tomorrow we'll actually be having our second 
uh, event for the, uh, the virtual classics book club. Um, so you might not have time to pick up a book for that, but get in for the next one. Uh, June 6th, we will be having the virtual tea time book club, and that is uh, The Wild Girl by Kate Forsyth. And we did buy extra copies in OverDrive so that people could download them um, from home as opposed to having to come to the library like normal and pick up the books here. Um, and then we will be having a virtual uh, YA book club on June 29th. Um, that is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Department updates, I'm sure you're all curious about what's going on in all the departments. Uh, as you know, Children's is busy with putting out a lot of e-content. However, they also finished their picture book project, so they, that project is completed. Almost all picture books have been categorized into one of 20-something different categories, friends and family, pets, machines and construction, that kind of thing, um, just to make the books more browsable for children and their parents. Um, we've gotten a lot of good feedback on this so far. The project started last summer, I believe, um, but now we are finished, so we're excited for everyone to eventually come back and, and see it. Circulation is doing curbside pickup, as I'm sure you are aware, so people can call us uh, between 10 and 6, well, we do close at 6, so call us a little bit before that, um, and request that the items that they have currently available, um, they can set a pickup time for that, and we will put them out on the table, just check it out, bag it up for them. Um, they don't need to do anything once they get here, except maybe give us a call once they're in the parking lot so that we make sure that those items aren't sitting out on those tables for too long. Um, oh, and again, yes. that's, that's available at all three locations? Yes, yep, all three. Um, we also are working on inventory right now with the reference staff. That's going really well. Um, and then anyone who is concerned about late fines, we are still not having any fines at the moment. Um, no late fines, uh, just until we can kind of get this sorted out. Um, I know a lot of people have been wondering about the check-in times. The book drops are open, but everything is on a 72 plus hour quarantine, so it does take us a little bit longer to get to those items, um, but we, we are accepting returns to the book drops. So if you've checked out, we, I know when we closed, we told people, check out 60 items, check out 80 items, it's fine you can return those if you're tired of having a stack of 80 items in your house, not a problem, we'll take care of it. Uh, outreach, outreach is still doing ordering, they're working on future programming, um, but unfortunately all their sites that they would go to are closed down, and of course, each site has its own reopening guidelines and its reopening date, so they're kind of just playing it by ear and letting us know um, as things develop. Reference has some fun things going on. They are offering remote printing, so patrons can go to our website, they can fill out some forms, um, and we will print out what they need remotely, and then they can come and pick it up as part of the curbside process. Um, we'll just have it in an envelope with their initials on it, and they can just pick that up. Um, we are limiting it to 10 pages right now because it is free, um, and it does take a little bit of time to, to process those, those orders. Uh, as always, they are more than welcome to help out anyone over the phone with accessing digital resources, and now is a really great time to get some one-on-one -on -one, um, attention with the, the May We Suggest. You can either fill out the form online or you can call the reference desk at either the main location or the Carlson location to talk to a reference librarian. Um, kind of tell them what you've read, what you like, and they will find some things and they will put them on hold for you, we'll pull them, and then it gets incorporated into the curbside process. Um, tech services, tech services is doing what tech services always does. They're processing new items, they're getting things out, um, so if you've got anything on order, don't worry. Tech Services is still working on processing all the new items that are coming into the library. And that is pretty much it. The one thing I would add is yes. that to let everybody know that we are still um, registering people for cards if they want to call in. And if they need to renew their cards, they can call in and renew their cards as well given uh, the clo curtain clo certain closure, and certainly we want to give folks access to 
the e-content and all the curbside services and everything that's going on. So if your card is expired or you want a library card, uh, you can call in any location and they'll register you yep. for a library card. We, we also do have the form online that you can fill out, um, but I will jump onto what Tim just said. So if you have a bunch of children that you would also like to register, awesome. Um, right now we are working on adjusting the form because it's email locked. So if you wanted to get an account for your three-year-old, you'd have to make your three-year-old an email. And we know that that's kind of a tedious process. So if you have an account already, people can just call us and we can just start tagging on children onto the account. That's not a problem. And we can take care of finalizing registration once the library reopens. Not a problem. And, and just an FYI, in terms of curbside, since we got started back on the 4th, we've circulated 9,669 items from the three locations. It's a, a stone's throw compared to what we'd be circulating if we were all open, but folks, it started out, um, I would say, the first week, and I'm sure Sonny can attest to this, um, there was certainly a, an original backlog on holds, and then we added that, the, the notification of uh, curbside. And so our, our pick list went up to like 900 items of something of, of that sort in like 42 pages. Um, so I give my, uh, the CERC folks all the credit at all the locations to really work through all that and really got it back under control. At one point, we were getting around 58 phone calls an hour, uh, which is a stretch certainly for uh, to, in terms of getting that done. And again, I think the staff really stepped up, I think really problem solved on how to you know triage phone calls. And so that's really gotten under control. And right now, you know, it, we have a little bump on Mondays and Tuesdays and work through it. And uh, so I would say overall, we've really found uh, a workflow for this. And I give uh, Sonny and all the CERC folks all the credit to get that done. And it's been, Obviously, it's something brand new for us. It's always a learning curve, and I think they did a tremendous job to make it as successful as it has been. Well, um, it sounds wonderful so far. I'm going to open it up to questions, comments, concerns to the group. This is Whitney talking. Here I am, of course, again with questions. Um, my first question is about the table for um, curbside. So the first time, so I've used it a couple times to pick up books, and the first time they just set the books out, um, and I didn't call. They were already out there. Is there, And then the next time they asked me to call, is there a standardized process for that, and has there been any security concerns with the book staying out too long? I think what they've done is initially, again, it was us working through it. Um, we've really begun to encourage folks to call more closely to when they're going to arrive. Um, again, the, the impetus for the table outside, obviously, and, and how we've kind of arranged it at the other locations, is to tr truly ensure a no contact curbside uh, service. And a lot of that came through in you know, a lot of the research we did in terms of curbside services across the country at various libraries where they had a lot of hand-to-hand -hand and face-to-face -face kind of mingling at the service point that, and there were several libraries that decided to cease curbside because of the situations that arose with that. Now we wanted to avoid that obviously, but at the same time offer the curbside service. And I think, you know, through trial and error, uh, again, as we work through this, it was to try and get folks to call closer and have us deposit those items. Uh, Maine is the obviously the largest challenge, unlike you know Northport and Carlson, where there is kind of an enclosure that's separate from the the inner li library area that doesn't necessitate opening the doors, where at Maine, you'd open the doors downtown, folks are just gonna wander in. So that made the necessary to put the table outside. So to answer your question, Whitney, was again, us working through this process and trying to ensure a no contact curbside service. Okay. My, my main question was, um, I guess, um, wondering if people have had any, like it sounds like the books have been getting to, the pe to people correct or uh, there haven't been any complaints that 
other people have taken their book sitting on the table. At me is where I picked up. Well, I, it has happened. You know, things have disappeared. I, I wouldn't say it's been a tremendous rash, but it has happened. Okay, thank you. More questions? Comment? I have another question. I don't know if this is the... Uh, um, the census is happening this year, and I know libraries usually promote the census. How, how has, has the library been doing anything online promoting the census or any, like, um, pieces of paper inside of books to remind people to do the census or a sign-out front or anything? Is that part of what libraries do in general? I'm not sure even. So, Kim or Sunny, if one of you guys want to speak to that. Well, I think there we did have a staff person involved with that to a certain degree, and we did have things on the website in that regard. I think what has happened is we've certainly had different responsibilities once we were closed uh, directly related to the cities and the responsibilities that we are looking at as a department. Um, so I must say that it, to a certain degree, it's been first things first for us, uh, given this unprecedented situation. I'd say yes, that in the past, there's more, certainly more that we've done in terms of the census, but um, hopefully we can get back to that. Um, the person that we've had involved in that is currently working at the Emergency Operations Center, so that's, that's another thing that has kind of taken precedent over that activity. Okay, uh, more right. questions. I'll let other people ask questions first. This is Whitney again. Anyone has other ones first? Okay, I'll, I'll jump yours. in again. Um, my last question is, I, um, if you've been working with the city, as far as I know, a lot of people, there have been people who have been on unemployment, um, using the food bank services, et cetera. Are, are you planning any type of programming to, um, in coordination with the city to um, help people that have you know, had a job switch or have started using the emergency food services um, in town, any, any kind of offering even online of like how to do it or anything like that? I, there has been discussions on that particular thing and we're looking more into that. We don't have anything concrete at this time. Um, and But certainly that has been a discussion of it, what we could possibly do to assist there. Certainly I, we haven't heard anything from the city uh, what you know, directly from them is in kind of that kind of partnership. But um, certainly as we move ahead towards reopening, you know, that is obviously something what we can look at in terms of adult programming, kind of a remote or resources and this kind of thing. I know um, there were some uh, uh, monitored lists of resources that got out on the websites and this kind of thing, um, but there's always more to do, obviously. Okay, so that's, that's in your possible plans for the future, but not at this point, maybe when you open. Is that what I heard? Yes. Okay. Thank you. When you, if you have more questions, you can go ahead. That was my last question. Thank you for asking. That was. Okay. Um, other folks? Um, I've got one. I'm wondering if... Um, you know, looking at the online story times and baby rhyme time stuff up on YouTube, and um, I wonder if you guys are uh, prepared to deal with. I've seen you got a hundred people that the fairy time story time was a hundred people viewed on YouTube, and then eighty-seven on the city's YouTube channel, or well, on your Facebook page. And um, I'm wondering if you guys are gonna, with this popularity, you guys are gonna start becoming YouTube celebrities and we'll have a following and uh, it will really take off and um, you guys will really make it in the YouTube world. I give the I give those folks all the credit in the world for putting those things together. Um, I, I don't know if you guys got that picture I emailed out a couple weeks ago uh, from uh, where a, a mother emailed a picture of her three little ones sitting on their blankets staring at the screen 
watching this the, the virtual story time, I thought that was special. So I hope we do be I hope they do become YouTube stars because it'll all be great. Yeah, well, I've always, you know, see your guys' summer videos that you do every year to kick off the um, the the summer reading season for kids. I mean, um, I think the talent is there, so um, so it's kind of exciting to, you know, making lemonades out, um, out of this lemon situation where a lot of this stuff has to move over to the internet virtual world, and um, there's no doubt in my mind that you guys are. Um, the crew to to be to be doing this stuff so um but yeah other than that um the emoji poetry contest for teens and adults um <laughs> killed me um that that was an interesting idea whoever came up with that one um the creative the creativity is um never ceases to amaze me um and the pairs well with um i mean you guys are getting creative here and i um tickled by the the whole thing so um so good good job i'm sure you're you know telling your staff that they're doing and they are they're doing a good um doing a good job during this time so just tell them from us as well that that um their create their creativity is is certainly um not being dampened by by uh the situation that we're in so, um, so anything else from anybody before we start moving on to Tim's director's report? No. Okay. Well, thanks, Sunny, for um, for hopping on this call and for giving us the staff report. Um, and then we'll move on to Tim. Yes. Um, per your packet, you can see a lot of virtual discussions, kind of working around. Um, kind of a uh, lot of stuff you know obviously this is an unprecedented situation for us and how we worked and a lot of uh, coordination with the city um, coordinating with staff department heads um, and you know the, with the obviously the goal of initially uh, finding that safe spot to and, and kind of recalibrate what we're doing uh, as you said uh, Rachel uh, I think they did, a, our staff did a really tremendous job in that in terms of as unprecedented and um, as it was. I think the other thing is I, I really commend the city for really stepping up and supporting city employees through this process. I think that's been tremendous. Um, so a lot of discussions, a lot of meetings, as you can see there over the last couple months uh, to really um, pull things together and keep the things going. and. Uh, it's been a good experience just with everybody involved, especially city, uh, like I said, supporting the employees. Um, so I guess if anybody has any general questions in regards to the report. Uh, doesn't sound like it, thanks, thanks to the city. Um, okay, you can move on to the, um, well, is there, there's probably more to the director's report, Tim, or just that? Um, just that, if in in terms of, I'm certainly per the other the B under new business, we can get delve into kind of where we are on in terms of you know, prepping locations and this kind of thing. So, if we want to keep okay. those specifics to that, that's fine. Okay. Um, well, then let's move to, move on to unfinished business. We have the annual circulation report. And, and this came back, uh, uh, if you remember, Carlos requested kind of a broader view in terms of annual c circulation. So what you got there uh, is the annual circulation by year, by month, since 2009. And you can see the ebb and flow there. Um, and you can see 16 was kind of a drop off and that was a year where we had lots of construction around two at one point all three locations and also the, there was a significant decline in uh, the beginning of the decline of uh, AV media circulation and then obviously that the growth after that in terms of our e-content and just the continued growth in terms of print content as well uh, to see the growth there to uh, back in last year, the end of last year, with the total circulation last year was a new record for the Fargo Public Library. We see over 1,047,165. And with a record month of 
single month of circulation, that being July of 103,434, uh, which kind of leaves us off at April of this year, which is kind of a new low, obviously, with being closed. So um, just kind of a broader view of the trends, um, obviously, this whole situation being an anomaly in regards to that. Um, but, you know, per Carlos' uh, request, kind of looking at that broader view. I got one question about why are some of the numbers red? The red numbers mean that it was lower than the same month of the previous year. So if you look at April of 13, and the bold, it's bolded at 85,383, which then is the highest total for the month of April, if we look at the, the various, then the following April was 80,446, of which was obviously lower. So it, I make that red just to delineate that it was lower than the April of the previous month, or what, sure. or the previous okay. year rather. And again, the black bold means that it's it's the record for that particular month. So if you look at 19, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months of the highest circulation for that month by year. So. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Folks have questions for Tim. No, okay, let's move um, on to... Rachel, I have... Oh, yeah. This is Whitney. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Go ahead. Um, this is really interesting data. I would also be interested if you could pull for next meeting the, um, the cardholder data for the past 10 years as well and kind of put them side by side and see where they sit as far as if, if card number of cardholders for the library system is also is kind of going up as well. The, the part... And I think it would... Oh, sorry. Um, the hard thing with that, Whitney, is that's always a point in time because the way we do that, and we've done it with the previous system and the current system, is that it's kind of a rolling number that folks that after a certain point, are they, they had a card, and I, I, I apologize, I can't give you the details, but at a certain point, they, they expire after three years, and so they're not, they're in the system, but they're not active. So it, it, you have a lot of people signing up, obviously, but then you have a lot of people kind of, it isn't kind of becoming expired. So if we got it like end of year, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, that it won't be quite apples to apples because the number of active cardholders through any year will, will vary with folks coming on and folks coming off if that makes any sense. But so it's kind of thinking what point in time does that number make sense? Uh, beginning of the year, end of the year, middle of the year, um, but there is some variance there. And certainly also if you have, obviously in 16 we went live with our new system, which has a better, you know, before we were in a consortia, so that number was not as accurate as it is now in terms of total registered active cards. So there might be a little bit of distortion there. Um, that's just kind of an FYI based on just the, the you know, the vagaries of, of active cards versus expired cards and the previous ILS and the current ILS. Yeah. That, um, maybe if you, I mean, you could choose like January 1 of each year or December. I mean, just like a point in time so we kind of see if, how they fluctuated all through the years. So be, I mean, I would be interested in seeing that. And I mean, another point could be to look at, I mean, popul I mean, it's hard to look at data just by itself. So another point would be like, what is the population size of this area or like the area that can get cards? I, I can't remember if West Fargo can as well. And see how the population is growing alongside of the numbers. So those would be interesting data for me to take a look at. If you could put something together on that. It doesn't have to be for next meeting or just, just sometime in the next few months. I'd be really interested. I just really like data. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, more questions, comments, concerns? No. Okay. Let's move on to the very generous Stensland gift 
Um, and Tim, why don't you tell us about that? Right. Um, I was notified by uh, staff from Merrill Lynch that the gentleman, Mr. Jim Stensland, in his will, um, he had passed away, and part of his will was that the value of his current IRA be donated to the Fargo Public Library, and per your packet, uh, you see, as Rachel said, it's very generous uh, in terms of that. Um, uh, they were able to, Merrill Lynch was able to provide uh, contact for his sister, in which I did send an acknowledgement letter and offer to the opportunity to have uh, some honorary on the donor wall in that regard. So that was been sent out. Uh, in terms of the board, I'm uh, looking for, it's an action item, uh, certainly something of this magnitude. I, it would be my recommendation that it go towards the endowment. Um, and in the past, the, the, the board has chosen to go, again, we have two funds at the FM Area Foundation. One kind of the original kind of steadfast uh, essentially can't be touched, uh, which the other one is allows for the board to make more decisions in terms of usage. In a previous, the previous donation of a larger endowment, they chose to go with the more accessible fund at FM Area Foundation. So I would offer up the recommendation for this uh, donation uh, from the Jim Stensland a state to go to uh, that particular fund at the FM, Fair, FM Area Foundation in terms of our endowment. So that would be my recommendation to the board uh, for action in this regard. All right, well, I would um, move for that recommendation to, um, to do as Tim suggested. Um, certainly want to leave it open to questions and discussions you know, the um, discussion, if people had further questions for Tim about that. I second the motion. Okay, then the second, that sounded like a carry voice. Yes, sorry, this is Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a first and second, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, that is Aye. approved. Um, great. Okay. Um, well, thanks to the Stenslin family, um, Jim specifically, um, that is super generous, very wonderful, and just a pleasant, pleasant little surprise. So, um, thank you very much, and um, and let's move on to the COVID nineteen library update. Yes. Um, and and where we are is in kind of looking at the organization of getting ourselves reopened uh, really is, have identified some very specific things in that regard. Getting to uh, stage two of the reopening plan is number one, uh, additional signage at all locations in terms of floor signage and regular signage and door signage in regards to social distancing. Uh, the installation of plexiglass guards at service points, uh, alteration of the reference desk at Maine, uh, establishment of daily cleaning during public service hours. Uh, obviously, in terms of these things, I have been working with obviously staff, uh, buildings and grounds, city administration. Uh, the, the plexiglass guards have been installed at Maine in terms of the uh, CERC desk and the children's desk. We're working on uh, coordinating the reconfiguration up at the reference desk. Um, the furniture's been moved, uh, reduction in seating by, I would say, a little more than a third or maybe two thirds. And um, in my history, you might not know this because I wouldn't put this in my, uh, uh, when I applied for this job, but I worked as a mover and I can tell you this, once you're a mover, you're always a mover. So. The furniture, I can tell you, has been moved because I know it's been moved because I moved it. Um, uh, in terms of the signage that's been ordered, uh, the cleaning, i uh, been working with B&G, also been going out to staff uh, to really identify that. Uh, really in terms of we want to make sure that, you know, obviously staff areas, we're looking to staff to, to maintain those. Um, 
Public areas, though, we need uh, additional assistance and staffing via e either B&G or contract cleaners. And we're working on developing what we need in that regard uh, to ensure uh, the best maintenance that we can possibly do uh, once we get open. Um, so kind of looking forward, those are the things we're putting in place currently. And, you know, obviously we've reduced the number of uh, computers, inter public internet stations, again, seating. Uh, at the initial reopening, we don't, we won't have meeting rooms uh, available. We'll have study rooms. The study rooms will not be available. The wiggle room will not be available. It's one of those things as kind of a, a limited service reopening uh, just based on the situation. Um, but that's kind of the direction we're headed in terms of PPE and sanitizer and wipes and masks. I can tell you working through the Emergency Operations Center, uh, we've had great response in regards to that. We have, uh, we've just received about another 110 cloth masks. Uh, we had original, we have uh, di disposable. So I would say in terms of that end, I think we're in a really good place. You know, certainly I've tasked with my direct, my department heads to make sure they stage what they need for their departments so we have a good honest look of where our inventory is so we'll get more if we need it. Um, so yeah, I, I would say all in all, we're heading in the right direction. Uh, I, in terms of a solid date, I, I wanna make sure the kind of things that I talked about are utterly complete and we're comfortable with where those things, situations are uh, before we set a date and that way we can focus on what we need to focus on in that regard. Well, thanks, Tim. And oh, um, just one more thing, and I think the staff have been tremendous. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it when you really look at what this particular situation, you know, the challenges for us are tremendous because this is everything that we're attempting to do achieve is kind of direct opposite of what we've always been. We've always been about access. We've always been about, you know, customer service. We've always been about access, you know, to, you know, and having those things and being a lo not just books on the shelves, but a location and a destination and a resource. Unfortunately, this particular situation being as unprecedented as it is, it it's that added challenge of trying to find that balance. And I think I really give the staff all the credit. They really have the patience um, to work through this process, you know, and, you know, first the, the shock of being closed and what does that look like? And again, Sid, the city really stepped up in that regard. And then working through the details of curbside and all the programming. And like you said, Rachel, all the online stuff and the creativity, and they've done it with great patience and a good sense of humor. So. I, I don't doubt any chance that we won't be successful in limited act, limited services reopening, but it has its very specific challenges. You know, I didn't take pandemic classes in library school, but certainly I'm getting schooled currently. Well, um, thanks, Tim. I, yeah, I, I definitely think it's always worth emphasizing that you've got such a... Um, a solid crew that you, um, it, you know, it feels like library's biggest strength is the is the folks that work there. So, um, and no doubt they're, and I have no doubt in my mind that they're rising to the to the challenges <coughs> here that they're presented with. Um, I'm gonna, and I think I also heard in your message there that if anybody ever needs help moving, that you are the guy to call. Is what I think I read between the lines in in your your employment your employment history. So, um, so I will open it up though to see what other folks have for questions on the um, on the COVID situation and how the library is handling it. And um, go ahead, Whitney. I bet you have. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna up and see if Whitney, why don't you go first, and then we'll um, see if Mary or Carrie have um, any questions from there. So go ahead. Okay, yeah, this is Whitney. Uh, I have uh, three questions. It looks like it might end up being four, but um, I first wanted to ask about um, 
So I know there were some, probably some staff changes with the library not being open anymore. Is Are all library staff back on, or is there a certain percentage not working currently because they're part-time? So I, just have, I just wanted to ask about staff first. When you say not working, um, we've tried, obviously, right. working through HR. And again, where that is is all employees are being paid either you know working partially from home working in terms of the families first through the federal or city emergency leave to make up the difference so it isn't anybody that isn't getting paid now we've had and again the challenge is that there's so many permutations of this we've had a couple staff that had that work part-time here and had other part-time jobs and there was very situations where they had worked full they were called more full-time at their other job and weren't available so there was that or that based on their hours that they did part-time for us were always evening or weekends or whatever and given our hours when we we're closed we basically didn't have that so there was some limited access on their part that's two instances in terms of the staff and so we had to work and find our way through that uh, working with HR, obviously the direct supervisor, and this kind of thing. So if that gets to your question, now, as of right now, we have different people still out on FFCRA, which is that Families First. Other folks, uh, based on underlying health issues that are currently working from home partially. Uh, other folks, uh, based on uh, family, you know, child care situations, that they do work partially at home and other emergency leave to make up the difference. So we have quite a myriad of different arrangements what we've had to develop, obviously working through HR as a city department. We haven't been free, you know, freelancing any of this, um, but it has been a balance. It has been a challenge to try and find those, you know, our method or, or how to follow up with this and given all the different permutations with the staff. No, you you answered my question. Your phrase, "all employees are being paid," but that was perfect. Um, then um, my next question is about the library's budget. Um, in the last city commission meeting, Bruce Grubb said that um, he went to different departments and asked if, if people would like voluntarily reduce their budget in different areas. Did the library have to reduce budget in different areas? What we what we've been doing based on those conversations is one thing is. Uh, a capital project that we had, capital projects that we had uh, scheduled for this year, the, primarily the, the lighting uh, upgrade at the main and Carlson Library, those are currently on hold. Uh, that had budgeted around 110,000. Uh, the bids came in a lot less than that, so that's something that's not currently in the pipeline. In terms of operating, very limited, um, certainly looking at uh, mainly marketing money to a certain degree so we'll be looking at getting creative or work, working with the friends in terms of that the balance of the year I would say given that discussion we were not really drawn upon heavily I the major thing obviously was just the capital budget um, which given this situation I, I really understand and basically is given how as much support as we've gotten from the city in regards to this whole process and this whole situation, I, I think we'll, we'll be okay in that regard. Obviously, the, you know, we're not in any kind of crisis situation in terms of our lighting. It was more of getting newer, efficient, uh, cost-saving uh, functionality out of the newer ones. And, and so we've certainly had that conversation with city administration, and they're aware of that, uh, but that is currently on hold. Okay, thanks, thanks, Tim. Um, that answered that question. My last question, probably, is um, I know you said you don't know when this like stage two reopening the library will happen. Um, you want to get everything in place, and will will that um, be triggered any at all by um, the a sustained reduction in new COVID cases for Cass County for a certain number of days, like for a couple weeks, or will it be? Um, will be triggered as well by that number 
I think, you know, based on the discussions at the city level, uh, uh, CAS Public Health and, and what they're looking at, and certainly the, the direction that we're getting on that is, is looking at hospitalizations and, and this kind of thing. Um, you know, I really think, so I guess I'm not in a position to find that number given that there's a back and forth between the state and the, the local. As a city department, I think we, we're we really, we have to, you know, where I'm saying is, I guess I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at, as a city department, putting the things in place that we can do uh, in terms of the locations, in terms of the staff training and everything, uh, and, and look at the direction through our local departments and as a city department and make that decision locally. Um, so, so Cass County, um, so the public health office will, you're pairing with them on decision making as well for instruction on that too? And city administration in conjunction with them, obviously. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Oh, I should say one. Thanks, Tim. The library, I'm so excited that curbside is open. We're utilizing that. Staff has been awesome. I always forget to give comments about how great the library is. I love the library. Thanks for doing what you do. I always have a bunch of questions, but I do really appreciate what the library is doing right now in this weird, weird time. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Whitney. Um, Mary and Gary. Any, any questions for Tim on, and certainly you don't have to, but any no questions, questions for Tim on that? Carrie. Mary, I, I made the mistake of telling my kids that I ordered Girl Scout cookies from you, and mm -hmm. they continually asked me where the cookies are, and I, you know, I'm like, well, you have to talk to the governor, we don't have any meetings, so. Right. Do so I, want I, I just want to then? assure you, I, I'm not gonna. I can't escape getting the cookies. We'll we'll get the cookies. Are you still at work downtown? If I call and pick up some library books, can I just drop off cookies at the same time? We can get something uh, outside of the staff entrance on the south side or something. That'll work. Let me know. Okay. No contact cookie exchanged. Exactly. Important, important stuff. Well, that is um, very important because uh, I, I too have had a box of um, cookies mm -hmm. that I am very excited about. I think about periodically. Um, so, so I'm going to have to hang out with uh, Tim whenever you six feet apart, of course, and uh, and um, the mouth watering. Just thinking about them, actually, but. Um, Mary and Carrie, do you guys have any questions about the about um, the what the library is doing on that um, or not? I just want to give you the opportunity before we move on. You don't know, you don't have to. Um, you don't have any. No, I don't have any questions. I am really impressed with the you know continued activity and even seeing the numbers for April. Obviously, they were very low, but it's impressive that even you know, given the fact that we're closed, basically, we still had 22,000 plus you know, pieces of material in circulation. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased to see that everybody's still working hard and getting creative and people are utilizing the resources that are out there. Yeah, yeah, and good work, guys. Um, well, we can move on to the um, stat, the stat report. Yeah, um, that's pretty. You can the the stats, and uh, uh, you can see the new registrations. And again, folks have been calling in. It's lower, obviously, than an average month, much lower, uh, without the walk-in. Um, and I've never seen an attendance uh, quite like that. Um, hope to never see it again. Um, and you see a lot of virtual on there. That's probably going to be. You know, in the future, that's going to be part of what we do. It's going to be part of what we are. It's, it's you know, uh, if it helps us grow as an organization in terms of virtual, then that's a good thing. Uh, the other ones are pretty, ex pretty much self-explanatory. Um, and again, yeah, the, the circulation. Uh, looking at, um, thank goodness for uh, our online uh, e-content, which was huge for us and pretty much made up the bulk of everything that happened in April. Uh, so that's 
pretty much what it is. Uh, not much to say in terms of circulation, but again, uh, it it was a, that's kind of where we are. Any questions for Tim? All right, well, let's move on to the financials. Right. Um, again, when we look at the donation summary for April, the big money coming in, again, uh, this was based on board action a while back looking at uh, the reconfiguration second floor at Maine, uh, and that was the, the money from the endowment, the dividend at the end of the year that we, the board decision to utilize that for the reconfiguration. So that was... Uh, from the FM Area Foundation. And um, obviously, in terms of that, we have some of the furniture that's going to go up there. Um, the shelving is going to be installed next week. Uh, all the rest of it is going to. And trust me, I moved the furniture out of there, so I know that's done. Um, so that's still going ahead. And I look forward to a time when we can have all the chairs up there and all the tables and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, the only expenditure was $27 out of a donation for. Uh, music for programming at Northport. Okay. Um, any questions for? Oh, I guess we haven't gotten to. The, are we going to cover the budget expenditure stuff? Sure. Um, yeah. If you look at uh, year to date, um, we're sitting really well. Um, obviously, you know, some lines we we didn't utilize at all since we've been closed. Obviously, security this kind of thing. We did utilize some of that for more online uh, uh, resources, knowing that. Um, but all in all, I think even with what we're trying to accomplish and per the city's request, uh, I think we're sitting very, very well, uh, certainly, I, I believe, for the balance of the year. And certainly through the year, what the, the amount of the year lapsed and where the overall percentage is in terms of expenditure. So I think we're doing really well. Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree. Um, does anybody have questions for Tim on, on the finances? No. Okay. Well, thanks, Tim. Um, and thanks, Tim, um, in terms of just overall, too, you've been emailing the board and keeping us in the loop about what's been going on, and um, that's certainly been certainly been appreciated um, on this whole this whole little journey that we've had the past yeah. couple months. That's a good so, way to put uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, support. And uh, I don't mind the questions. Uh, it's all good. These are all valid questions and good things for a director to know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't think we have anybody from the Friends of the Library on, on this call, um, unless anybody joined us in the meantime. But um, I can tell you that I can tell you though, everyone that, that they've maintained their um, uh, generosity through this process, and I've had a few requests that I've emailed, and they have just responded, had their little email meeting and approved it and, and continued on their generous, generous course even without access to or the dividends of their uh, proceeds of their bookstore at this time. So hmm. kudos to them. Yeah. Well, thanks, friend. Um, in, in public comments, uh, this is probably not going to be our first meeting where we have a public that's going to comment on... on um, what's going on but um hopefully they're expressing their gratitude during the curbside pickup and and in the um the ways that you know um that they can you know hopefully they're nice on the calls and all that kind of stuff because certainly you guys are doing your best um so okay so our next regular meeting then is june 16th um to be determined whether that will all be in person and back as business as usual or if we'll do round two of this um, we'll see. So um, thanks again to everybody, everybody on this call, and um, Betsy, Sunny, and Tim, and the gentleman that set up the, our call for today, and um, we'll see you next month.